First up, the stage is set for voting in the presidential elections in Iran on Friday, with candidates pulling out all stops in the last few days of campaigning. Of the six mostly hardline candidates confirmed by the Guardian Council, Masood Bezes Kian of the Reformist Front is regarded to be the only one representing moderates and reformists. He has the support of other smaller pro-reform fronts as well as former President Mohammad Khatami and former Foreign Minister Javed Zarif. Pejash Kian uh, backed the 2015 nuclear deal and has the support of the former President Rouhani's camp. He has hit out strongly against Western sanctions. If these people vote for me, I will be on their side. And I promise you that I'll never lie to you. Never. We must break this dam of sanctions. We must ruin those who benefit from sanctions. Those who benefit thousands of billions from these sanctions. And nobody knows. We will stand against them. Now, working against uh, Pejas Kian is the fact that Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khomeini has seemingly undercut him uh, for what he sees as supporting the U.S. Khomeini has called for maximum turnout for Friday's vote. Another key contender, Saeed Jalili, uh, ran Supreme Leader Khomeini's office for four years. He made an unsuccessful bid for the presidency in 2013 and withdrew from the 2021 race to support Raisi, whose death has triggered the election. The former nuclear negotiator has also said he is committed to protecting Iran against foreign interference. He has been a strong critic of the revival of the 2015 nuclear deal. I was one of the first nuclear negotiators myself. I was aware of the process and we pursued it, but we were on the path of defending people's interests and rights, not destroying them. And whatever our nuclear scientists have provided will be sent abroad. A third among the front runners will be another conservative, Mohammed Bakir. Kalibaf, who has promised to reduce the number of Afghan immigrants and supported strengthening of the axis of resistance. The priority for the next president is uh, going to be the economic and social issues which have reached a level of criticality. Uh, the rate of inflation is about 50 percent. The way forward uh, for further negotiations on a nuclear deal with the U.S. Western sanctions, the Israel question and support for Russia's invasion of Ukraine will be other key issues. Much will depend on whether a runoff becomes necessary if none of the candidates marshal 50% of the votes. As, uh, for more on this from Tehran is Fawad Izadi, Associate Professor, Faculty of World Studies, University of Tehran. Uh, Fawad Izadi, thanks very much indeed for talking to Vion. Uh, your thoughts on the possible contenders and their relationship with the Supreme Leader, which should be a key factor in who actually gets ahead. You know, we have uh, six candidates. Uh, three of them are running in single digits, so they are not going to do well. Uh, we have the other three uh, that uh, are uh, in about 20, 25 percent uh, in public opinion polls. Uh, so they're very close to each other. And we don't know who's going to be Iran's next president. We just have to wait uh, for Friday's elections and uh, the results will come out. If uh, any of these three uh, candidates goes over 50 percent, then they're going to be Iran's next president. And if they don't, we are going to have a runoff election in a week after Friday. Uh, and uh, Iran has a democracy, like India, like many other countries. Uh, Iran has a leader uh, also, uh, which he himself is uh, elected to the democratic process. Uh, it's a two-step election. People elect an assembly, and that assembly elects the leader. Uh, and uh, sometimes... Iranian presidents have had good relations, working good relations with uh, leaders. Sometimes there have been difficulties. And this is part of Iran's politics, like many other countries. We used to have a Shah. It used to be a kingdom here. 45 years ago, Iranians established a republic. And uh, this election, having a president, is the result of that revolution.
Right. For uh, Izadi, now the question is, has Raisi's death been a setback to Iran's aggressive posturing and policies against the U.S. and Israel? And what are some of the key factors that the new president will look at as he comes in? You know, um, Israelis are committing a genocide in Gaza, as we speak. They're kill they have killed uh, about 40,000 uh, people, mostly women and children. Uh, this type of genocidal regime cannot be tolerated. You cannot live peacefully in a neighborhood when you have someone who's committing murders every day. And uh, I think Iran's next president, whether it's the reformist candidate or the principalist candidate, I think uh, that's going to be one of the issues that they will have to deal with. Iran's support uh, for the Palestinian cause has been one of the main principles of Iran's foreign policy. And I think that support for the Palestinian cause will continue. Right. And some big faces, past presidents, are not in the race. Uh, how much of that do you think is an impact, uh, you know, to the challengers who are uh, in, in this race? You know, I think uh, public opinion polls show that we are going to have more than 50% uh, uh, people participating in the elections. Uh, and uh, the people who... Uh, people like Ahmadinejad, they already served two terms. And it seems that uh, having someone serving a third term or a fourth term is not something that's done in Iran. Uh, so overall, I don't think that's going to have uh, any significant effects. I think uh, people are going to go to the polls. Uh, there are a lot of uh, opposition supported by United States and Israel beaming uh, programs into Iran in uh, Farsi, asking people not to go to the polls. They're asking for the boycott of elections. They don't uh, want to have a vibrant democracy here. And uh, I don't think majority of Iranians will listen to these uh, calls for boycotts. Right. Fahad is the Associate Professor, Faculty of World Studies, University of Tehran. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, Iran goes to polls on June 28th. It will be a keenly watched election. For all the latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.